when I want to learn how to invest, I, I pick up, I, I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett. How many of you guys have heard of that name, Warren Buffett? Okay. Warren Buffett, who can tell me who Warren Buffett is? Bert? You're right, Mike. He's an investor. I mean, he's not just an investor. I mean, he is like the quintessential investor. Warren Buffett is, is the, the, probably the, the best investor that's ever walked this earth. Okay? Uh, Warren Buffett started off with about $102,000 uh, back in the 50s or so. And, and he had borrowed that money from friends and family members okay, when he started his investment group. His investment group, you may have heard of the company, it's called Berkshire Hathaway. You guys ever heard of that? Yep. You know how much one share of Berkshire Hathaway stock costs? Try about $67,000 or so just to buy one share. I don't know what it costs right now. Uh, just one share of Berkshire Hathaway stock, okay? Warren Buffett took that money and he studied under a mentor by the name of Benjamin Graham. Benjamin Graham is the father of investing. He wrote the book Fundamental Investing, okay? He was a, he was a uh, Columbia professor and he believed in fundamental investing. What's fundamental investing? He would study companies um, and make sure that the fundamentals were solid, that the, without getting too technical, the company had to have a certain level of profitability before he invested in it. The company had to have good management in place <coughs> before he invested in the company. There are certain fundamentals that that company had to have before uh, it was considered a, a, a wise investment. Okay? And when we invest, God wants us to be wise with our money. Uh, a lot of times we want to get rich quick. We just want to get out there and make the quick money. But fundamental investing requires some research on your part or to work with a financial advisor that understands these concepts and so forth. Most wealthy investors today don't do it on their own. They work with a financial advisor. In fact, statistically, People that invest over a million dollars or so have a financial advisor, over 90 plus percent of them, okay? Because they realize that they need a professional to help them in this, in this area. So Warren Buffett is now worth several billion. Um, I'm gonna say Warren Buffett is worth probably about $80 billion or so. I mean, he's big time, but he started off just investing, he just, he started off with about $102,000 is what he started off with. And he's amassed his great wealth. Not doing anything fancy, but just uh, investing fundamentally. His philosophy, you can take a note of this, is he only, buy he only buys companies that have a consumer monopoly. Okay? He's not, yes. Companies that have consumer monopolies would be a good example would be McDonald's. They have a corner on the market. They have a consumer monopoly. Um, who could give me another example of a, a, of a company that has a consumer monopoly? Mobile oil. Starbucks. Pepsi. Mobile oil. Pardon? Mobile oil. Mobile. Mobile oil. Exxon Mobil. Uh, how about Walmart? <laughs> There's Walmarts everywhere, right? Target, for some of you ladies, you may call it Target, right? Consumer monopoly, okay? You can just think of the companies that have a consumer monopoly. That's his philosophy. He only invests in, first criteria, he only invests in companies that have a consumer monopoly. And then secondly, those companies have to be dividend paying. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit as we be matriculate through this material. They have to pay dividends, and we'll talk about what dividends are. And then the third criteria is that they have to be profitable, and there's a measurement that he uses to determine the profitability of the company. And they have to have a good leader at the helm, a great CEO at the helm, okay? 
uh, someone with vision. Because if the company meets all those other criteria and they don't have a leader with vision, he's not going to invest in the company. Okay? How many companies can we think of today, like, you know, Pastor Bill, myself, uh, Donna, uh, LaDonna, and, and, and some of the others about our age, can think of back in the day that were progressive companies, and today they're not, they don't even exist. Remember Kodak? They had a consumer monopoly, but they slept on it, okay? And then other companies, they became digital, other companies, uh, 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 the digital technology came out and they were obsolete, okay? They were obsolete. So Warren Buffett has that criteria. He wants to buy companies that have a consumer monopoly, companies that uh, pay dividends, and have a certain amount of profit margin, uh, measure of profit and profitability, and companies that that have a lead, that have leadership in place. Okay, and so investing in those companies is how you get wealthy. It's how you get wealthy, and it's doing it consistently, which we'll talk about a little bit more. People think about people say, "Geez, when I get some money." I'm going to invest, okay? Now, from a financial planning standpoint, I tell clients that they should start with what they have, okay? My philosophy is that you should give 10%, okay? And that you should invest 10%, okay, as a start. You give 10%, you invest 10%. No one should should consume everything they make on themselves. That's the first problem, okay? Because when we, when we are thinking of just ourselves that way, you, you're not gonna grow, you're not gonna be blessed. Uh, it's just fundamentally, and that's whether you're in the church or out of the church. There are major corporations out there that fundamentally, the Gates Foundation, they give a lot to a lot of charities and so forth. These folks aren't even saved. You guys have heard of Bill Gates. But the Lord, he causes the rain to fall on the just as well as the unjust. If the person out there, these big corporations are, are uh, sowing financial seed, they're going to reap a financial blessing. Okay? And so when there, there's a principle in giving that cannot be refuted. And that's the thing that the people in the church need to understand more so. And you, you really have a head start on that. Okay? So it really starts with giving, give 